This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss tabs. If you'd like to follow along, go under the file menu to open, and in the sample files folder, scroll down to 0710 Tab Tips Part 2 and just click Open. Why don't I zoom in a little bit before we begin? And let's open the tab panel. Under the type menu, go to tabs, and there it is. Let me click on the frame in that first chapter where it says one basics. And now click on the magnet to draw it down to the top of the frame. The first thing we're going to talk about in this lesson is leaders. What is a leader? Let me show you. I'm going to click on the last tab on the right to select it. And in the leader field, I'm going to type a period. And now I'm going to click in another field to apply that. And you can see it puts in repeated periods going all the way across to one. The reason why it's called a leader is because it leads the eye from the chapter name to the page number. Maybe I think these periods are too tight together. Maybe I want a little bit of space between them. What I can do, click in the leader field again, and add a space. And if I click in another field, now they're spaced out. I like that a lot more. Well, I have this saved as a paragraph style. Why don't we go into the paragraph styles panel, and you can see it says table of contents, chapters. And then there's a plus mark. So there were overrides that were made. My leader is what the override is. So now if I go under my options menu to redefine style to that one change, you can see now I have leaders going all the way down my table of contents. Let me get my paragraph panel out of the way. So once again, paragraph styles are very powerful. Let me continue scrolling down to the next page. There is another use of leaders, but it's totally different. Let me select where it says name, address, city, state, zip. And let me turn on my hidden characters under the type menu, show hidden characters. And I'm going to apply a right justify tab. I'm just going to click about two inches or so. At this point, it really doesn't matter where I click, and you'll see why later. So I have my Right Justify tab selected, and I'm going to go to the Leader field and type a Shift hyphen, which is an underline. And I'm going to click in some other field to apply it. Oh, that works nicely. And this is actually much better than the alternative, which is getting a selection point and just typing underlines. It will never line up as nicely as this. It'll be going in and out along the right side because they're all starting in different places. Using leaders instead guarantees that they'll be lining up perfectly along the right side. Let me click above my ruler again to add another. And I have to add another leader, same one. Let me do it again and add another leader, shift hyphen, and click in another field to apply it. Well, that's pretty good. Now I could actually adjust these if I want. I can take this last one and in all of my paragraphs, drag it over to the far right. I could also take zip and drag that over to where I want it. Maybe a little bit further. So I have enough room for the zip number. And state, I don't need much room at all. Let me just drag it all the way over. If I happen to go outside from that area above my ruler and lose my tab, as long as I don't let go of my mouse button, I can drag it back up and move it into position perfectly. There is another way to do this. You can see it took some time to create each one of those leaders individually. Let me just clear all this out and we'll try it a different way. I'm going to do clear all. And I'm just going to set up one tab at about two inches. And I'm going to add a leader, shift hyphen, which is the underline. Click in another field, and there you have it. Well, to do the rest of them so I don't have to keep adding that leader, what I can do instead is go to Repeat Tab. 
And you can see it set the rest of them up beautifully. And now I'm just going to drag this over to where I want it, drag the next one over to where I want that, and drag state over as well. Works really well. And of course, I would save this now as a paragraph style if I know I need it again in this document or some other document. We'll be talking more about paragraph formatting in the next lesson.